Hi, my name's Bob. Welcome to another episode of Bob's Wood Shop. Hey, we're finishing up my series on planes. I've been restoring these, and this project here is a companion video on how to store planes and make a plane till. If you're new to my channel, welcome aboard, and thanks for stopping in. I've got a wide variety of projects on my website, so please check out a couple of the other videos that I have. Thank you. Hope you enjoy this video too. Okay, so I did a rough sketch on what this plane till size is going to be, and I've already planed the boards through the planer, and here I'm just joining one edge on the different pieces of wood. From there, I'm cutting them to width, and there's basically five boards that I'm working with here. Okay, so once cut the width, I got to cut them to length. So I've got the top and the bottom and the shelf that I'm working on right now. This is some red oak, and I'm using my Bosch Glide Saw. This is a fantastic saw. Got this a few years ago and love it. So I want this case to be very strong, and so I'm going to be using a dovetail jig. This is my dovetail jig from Peachtree. This jig is very simple to use. It's almost idiot proof. And uh, this process only really takes about 15 minutes to get all these dovetails uh, cut in. Notice I'm wearing my hearing and my face shield protection. You'll notice the fan in the background. It's been about 95 degrees here in New Jersey for the last couple weeks. So I'm using the fan in order to just chill me out a little bit. Again, this peach tree dovetail jig is a great little tool. And if you want to make fast, easy dovetails, I would recommend getting one of these. Right now I'm going to be cutting the pins. I already have cut the tails. You always cut the pins first when you're using this uh, fixture. So here I'm doing the first dry fit. I like making my joints very tight here. And so I'm giving them a little bit of pers persuasion with my plastic mallet. This is a dead blow mallet. And after the initial fit, the next several fits as I'm taking it apart and putting it back together, this just does get a little bit looser and a little bit easier to put together. But this is the exact first fit. So here I'm making the sliding dovetails on my router table. And this is for the shelf that's going to go at the, towards the bottom. Uh, you'll notice there's a sacrificial piece at the back of the side here. And that's to prevent blowout once the bit goes through the uh, back end. Okay, so I already did the dovetail on the side there. Now I'm doing a test fit for the shelf dovetail. So you have to experiment a little bit and test the width between the fence and the dovetail bit in order to get a, a nice tight fit. And I think it took me two times in order to get that right. This is still a little bit loose. I didn't really like that. I made another adjustment. And now I'm using the actual shelf here in order to make the final dovetail. I guess I should call this the male dovetail, fitting into the female dovetail on the sides. So this is a real simple way to make a sliding dovetail. You can do this on your lead jig if you have one, but I think it's much easier to do it on my router table. Okay, 
So here's another dry fit, just making sure that it goes in there well. And again, I need a lot of strength in this piece of furniture. Uh, and this, this type of joint is very strong. If I just use a regular dado, there's a possibility that it could come apart. But if you use a sliding dovetail like this, this thing is never going to come apart. So what I'm doing now on the sides and the top and the bottom, I have to cut a relief that's an inch and a half wide. And that's because I'm going to double up some plywood in order to put the back and the French cleat system that I'm going to use to hang this to the wall. If I just cut a three quarter inch relief from the back and hung the French cleat on the back, then it would be sticking out from the wall. And I wanted the till to be flush against the wall. And you'll see that later towards the end. So this involves two cuts, one deep, one an inch and a half deep, and another one that's about a quarter inch deep in order to release that piece. Notice right there that piece that was freed up, that was an actually a little bit of kickback, and that actually went through my garage door and it landed in the driveway. Then I've got to do some sanding. So my buddy Craig Newton helped me on this, and this is when we're using the vacuum bag in order to put the ebony background on it. And I just think this looks spectacular. He told me this is ebony heartwood and sapwood, and it's very striking. I love it. So this is a uh, test fit here, just to see. If you look closely at the bottom on this shelf, we actually used a piece of lace wood just to give it a little bit of variety. I needed a way in order to attach the panel to the till and I'm using hinges. When I insert the back, the back is only going to go from the top to about two thirds of the way down. And I needed to leave some space in order to get these hinges screwed in. I need to fasten the back and the French cleats prior to putting the panel in. So here I'm just experimenting with the French cleats on the top and bottom. And now I'm getting ready to glue up the uh, back panel. And you'll see that this does not go all the way down to the shelf. Again, I needed some space at the bottom in order to get those hinges screwed in. So I glue this and then end up using some uh, staples in order to attach that back onto the side. So in order to make sure the planes don't fall out of the plane, till I had to make these little L brackets on the top and bottom and that enables me to keep them locked in there until they're actually used and each one of these had to be custom fit because of the different lengths of the different planes so five of the planes had more or less a flat bottom on them and it was easy to do and it was just a simple L bracket. I guess in woodworking terms it would be called corner molding. So you notice I have to put a little U-shape feature into the corner molding because the totes on the next two planes don't have a flat side or a flat end I should say at the rear end of the plain. So I had to custom fit these. That's a Stanley number four and a half. So here's how I made the round feature on the bottom of that bracket. Just used my oscillating spindle sander. And that worked real good. I only took about 10 seconds. Then I put a little bit of boiled linseed oil in there and then uh, stapled in with my Grex pin nailer. Absolutely had to put these hold downs on there, otherwise some of these were going to fall out. So here I am starting to load up the till. 
It has come out very nice. Oops, put it in the right slot, Bob. So I just put in my eight, that's my number six. You notice I colored these red, white, and blue. This is my Patriot Plane Series. And total now I've reconditioned, refurbished six planes. So this was very satisfying getting these in here. I originally thought I was going to fill the entire thing up with planes like on the top right hand side there but I decided to leave some of the planes out and just in order to show off the wood. So here's what it's looking like experimenting with different planes down on the shelf. You'll notice it was swapping different planes in and out of there. I decided to put all metal planes in there and keep the wood ones out. So overall I'm very happy with this. Uh, it's a project I've been working on for the last 10 days or so and I'm getting quite a bit of satisfaction of getting these things super sharp and making gossamer thin shavings with these planes. I've never really been a hand plane guy but I am now. So hopefully this has given you some inspiration in order to organize your planes. This is a relatively basically it's a bookcase with a slanted back on it and very easy project. This is like seventh grade type work. Very easy to do. So that wraps up the build process. I hope you enjoyed it. Try to go step by step and let you guys understand how it went. I do want to thank you for tuning in and spending a little bit of your day with me and please give me a like, comment, or subscribe as I'm spending a lot of time doing these videos. I'm having a lot of fun doing it, but I would like to get some feedback. Do you have any ideas that you would like to see me build? I've got about five or six already stacked up, but I'd like to hear some ideas on things that you might like to see be built. And who knows, you might even get one of those projects, especially if you're a friend or a relative. So until next time, have fun in your shop and stay safe in your shop. Bye-bye.